Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The limit as x approaches 2 of 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 over x cubed plus 4 is equal to 1 fourth. Now, really, we're dealing with the limit of a function. Which function exactly? Well, this expression could take in any value of x that is not equal to the negative cube root of 4. So we're going to say that the domain of our function is all real numbers excluding the negative cube root of 4. So, what does this limit mean? Well, by the epsilon delta definition of a limit, this means the following. It means for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that for all x in the domain of our function, if 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus 2, which is less than delta, then the absolute value of 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 over x cubed plus 4 minus 1 fourth is less than epsilon. So really, to prove this limit, all we have to do is prove this statement. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than 0, let's give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than 0. From here, we want to find a delta greater than 0 such that this is true. Now, let's pretend as though we've already figured out what to choose delta to be. And from here, we would want to show for all x in the domain of our function, this is true. Well, since we're trying to prove a statement about every x in the domain of our function, let's give ourselves an arbitrary x in the domain of our function. From here, the whole goal is to show that this inequality is true. So let's start out by writing the left-hand side of this inequality. The whole goal is to make this guy less than epsilon. And in the process of doing so, we're going to figure out what we should define delta to be. So to start, let's re-express this guy in a different way. Let's first combine these two fractions into a single fraction. To do that, we'll multiply both the numerator and denominator of the first fraction by 4. And we'll multiply both the numerator and denominator of the second fraction by x cubed plus 4. And so now that we have common denominators, we can combine these two into a single fraction. So just like that. And now let's just distribute the 4 across this parentheses and distribute the minus sign across this parentheses. And notice how convenient it is that the 4s are going to cancel out. And so now let's apply a property of absolute values, which says that the absolute value of a fraction is equal to the absolute value of the numerator divided by the absolute value of the denominator. So we get this. Also, if we take a look at what we have in the denominator, well, we can apply another property of absolute values, which tells us that the absolute value of a product is equal to product of absolute values. So we get this. But really, the absolute value 4 is just 4. So we get this. And now, if we take a look at what we have in the numerator, well, just to make it look nicer, we're going to realize that the absolute value of what we have in the numerator is equal to the absolute value of its negative. In other words, this must be true. Right? This property works for any real number. And then if we just distribute the negative sign across the parentheses, we get this. And in my opinion, this just looks nicer, having a positive sign in front of x cubed rather than a negative sign. So we have this. But now, let's actually factor the numerator. Right? We could factor out an x. 
and then we could factor this quadratic. This is really just x minus 2 times x minus 6. So we get this. And then let's remember that the absolute value of a product is equal to product of absolute values. So we get this. Okay, so then what do we do from here? Well, notice the numerator is greater than or equal to zero, as far as we know. The denominator is greater than zero. So if we make the denominator smaller, that'll only make this guy bigger. And so if we remove the four, well, that makes the denominator smaller. So overall, this quantity will get bigger. So we get this. Now notice, we conveniently have absolute value of x minus two, which we know is less than delta. So if we make the numerator bigger, that'll only make this entire quantity bigger. Therefore, if we replace absolute value of x minus two with the bigger quantity delta, that'll make this entire thing bigger. So we get this. Okay, but then what do we do from here? Now remember, the whole goal is to make this guy less than epsilon. And in the process of doing so, we need to figure out how we should define delta. Well, maybe it's at this point we should start thinking about how we should define delta. Now, a way in which we could define delta is we can define delta so that delta is less than or equal to a list of positive numbers. And it turns out it's nice if we restrict delta small enough so that the quantities we have inside these absolute values are always a fixed sign. So in this case, if we define delta so that delta is less than or equal to one, then it turns out the quantities inside these absolute values all have a fixed sign. The reason why is because since delta is less than or equal to one, we have that absolute value of x minus two must be less than one. But in the language of absolute values, this means that x minus two lies between negative one and positive one. And then adding two on all three sides, this is saying that x lies between one and three. So with the restriction that delta is less than or equal to one, we have that x lies between one and three. But no matter which value between one and three we pick, each of these three guys inside the absolute values all have a fixed sign, right? X must be positive, X minus six must be negative, and X cubed plus four must be positive. And since X is positive, the absolute value of X is equal to X. Since X minus six is negative, the absolute value of X minus six must be equal to six minus X. And since X cubed plus four is positive, its absolute value must be equal to x cubed plus 4. So we get this. Now notice the numerator is positive, the denominator is positive. If we make the denominator smaller, that'll only make this entire thing bigger. Now x cubed plus 4 is certainly bigger than 1. So if we replace the denominator with 1, we've made the denominator smaller, and so that makes this entire thing bigger. So we get this. In fact, I'm just going to write delta x times 6 minus x. Now, since x is less than 3, this quantity must be less than delta times 3 times 6 minus x. And then it turns out we can manipulate this inequality to show that 6 minus x is less than a fixed positive number. To see how, well, let me just rewrite this inequality down here. Now, first, if we negate both sides, we get this. And then if we add 6 to all three sides, we get this. So 6 minus x is less than 5. Because 6 minus x is less than 5, this entire thing must be less than 3 delta times 5 which is equal to 15 delta. And now all we have to do 
is restrict delta so that delta is less than or equal to epsilon over 15. Because with that restriction, it follows that 15 delta is less than or equal to 15 times epsilon over 15, which is equal to epsilon. And so through this chain, we have established that this guy is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted to deduce. Right, and in doing so, we restricted delta so that delta is less than or equal to one and delta is less than or equal to epsilon over 15. So all we have to do is define delta so that delta is the smaller of these two numbers. With that choice for delta, this argument follows. And so we have proven that this statement is true. And that proves that the limit is true. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.